Hey gang, it's Ed here and welcome to module five, day one. I've got to say it's my personal favorite module and that's why I'm excited to be introducing what is going to be an action packed week for you. And here in day one, I want to tell you why market leadership is so important, why I consider it the secret weapon. And we're going to show you some pretty amazing techniques. But first, I want to give you some background as to why I think it's so important. You know, for me, market leadership is, well, let me tell you where I first heard the heard this concept and I started fermenting. And this is, uh, gosh, a good three years ago now. Uh, Seth Godin, the author, released a great book, which I heartily recommend you go and read at some point when you've got some spare time after the challenge, uh, a book called Tribes. And he talked about how if you're going to make a difference in anything at all, you really need to step up and become a leader of a tribe. And this doesn't matter whether you are a artist who plays guitars in coffee shops and you get a thousand fans and you make a living doing that way or doing art, or whether you're a business and you've got a thousand clients in a business, or indeed, in our case, whether you're going to start something in an online business that you need these fans. And of course, we have been doing throughout the course of the challenge so far, testing and setting up the testing of markets where potentially we can become a market leader. Now, right about this time, people start getting a bit sweaty because market leadership and the words leadership and the words influence can really have some negative connotations for people. So I'm just asking you, just stay with me for today. I promise it's a very light day, no activities at the end of the day, but some really crucial baseline before we get cracking on for the rest of the week. But stay with me because I know people here who are listening, it may well be you that are shy, that the concept of leadership really has a negative one from school or wherever, please, it's not what you think. And just give me today to hear me out and let me make a case for you. First of all, let's talk about physics, one of my favorite topics. What has physics got to do with business, let alone online business? Well, let me tell you a little story. In this day and age, let's imagine that you want to buy a camera lens, for example. And you do your research online and you see that there are two people who have that lens. And guess what? They're about the same price. They're about the same, um, you know, looks like they've got the same guarantee, same customer service, same delivery. Everything seems the same. But company A, you notice that they've got a bunch of reviews when you did the lookup in Google. And you notice there's a bunch of likes and pluses on their name compared to company B, which has none. And then you realize that, oh, yeah, I read that guy's blog. Yeah, I know the person who, who runs this camera store. Oh, yeah, and I think I saw him speaking the other day. And, yeah, I love, I, and that's right, he was a guest on that podcast I heard the other week. And then for company B, remember, same product, same price. You haven't heard of them. There's no reviews. There's nothing. They're anonymous for all you care. Who are you going to buy from? And that's right. That's why I say it's physics. You're going to buy from the person you know. What's incredible, amazing, potentially even ironic in this day and age is that we're really going back, because we are so bombarded with information, indeed it's an information avalanche, that we have to go back to the way we used to make decisions when we were back in our village all those years ago, where you bought and did things based on people's verbal recommendations. And now those verbal recommendations can come from anybody in your network, in your social group. But of course, that could be anybody on your Facebook book page, which includes everybody from around the planet. And search engines realize this. Okay, so the more information that there is, the more you've got to deal with. You know, Google's Eric Schmidt was quoted uh, last year saying that take all the information up to the year 2003, all information created by man, the whole lot, okay, right up to 2003. 
Google is indexing that amount of information now every two days. That's right, you heard me, every two days. All of information from the beginning of time to 2003, every two days. How can we cope? The answer is we can't cope. Nobody can cope. Professionals can't cope, let alone Joe and Jane Smith. So when we're faced with this avalanche of information, all this information on camera lenses, how am I going to choose what camera lens? Well, if Dan has bought the lens and I ask Dan, hey, Dan, what do you reckon this lens for my GH2? And he says, oh, I love that lens, Ed. It's fantastic. What do you think I'm going to do? Of course, I'm going to buy the lens. And that sort of personal recommendation is our future. There is no question of it. And guess what? Google and Bing and all the other search engines and YouTube realize this. You know, we've been teaching you a lot in the last couple of modules about backlinks. And make no mistake, they are extremely important. But there's another game in town. And this is what this module is all about preparing you for. Because people, when they like what you have, they hit that like button that you see all over the place, or they hit that plus one button, or they Twitter about you. That is a signal which the search engines are using to determine whether they should show your piece of information. And of course, if they show your piece of information on the front page of Google, that gets you traffic. And of course, if you get traffic, then you might be able to convert them onto an email list or get them to buy something, and that makes you money. So this is why this topic is so important this week. So the great thing about the challenge is the last two modules we've been giving you and educating you all about backlinks, which are, as I say, intensely important. This module is going to get you started down the path of the other side, social recommendations, liking, concepts like author rank. Now, all of these are fluffy words. Don't freak out. I'm going to explain it all. And I've brought in some of my favorite people online to help me this week, teach you and walk you through this module. So that's why it's become so important. And this whole concept of market leadership means that if you're in a market, you really need to be somewhere in a position of influence. And that leads me to this concept, the concept of the 20. Now, I first read about this in another great book um, by Hugh McLeod, and it's called Evil Plans. Wonderful book. Again, something for you to put on your book list for after the challenge. And I'm reading this, and I only read it just relatively recently, flying home on the way from Los Angeles back home here to Melbourne. And I'm reading it through, and I'm loving every second of it. It's just so much good stuff. But then something smashes me in the face. Like, if you talk about market leadership, I consider myself a bit of an expert in this area of marketing. And yet, here in two pages, Hugh has just given me a punch right in the forehead of something that should have been blatantly obvious to me and wasn't. I hadn't been able to articulate it in this way. And I want to present this concept to you because I think you'll get this. When you think about it, if we accept that being an influencer of some kind, and for all those people who are freaking out and saying, oh, I just want to be anonymous, I don't want to deal with anybody, I'm shy, I'm, I, I don't want to deal with anybody, please don't make me do any of this stuff. Please, I beg you, stay with me. Stay with me. I promise you I will address every one of those concerns before today's lesson is out. But just stay with me for the moment. So... If you analyze a market, now let's, you know, let's use me as an example, you know, because, hey, why not? The rule of 20 is this. Make a list of the top 20 most influential people in your market, in the area that you are doing business in. And then ask yourself this question. How many of those 20 are reading your stuff? know who you are? And if the answer to that question is not many, then you've probably got a problem in terms of being a long-term player in that marketplace. Like I said, don't freak out. Stay with me. Stay with me. After this module, 
you will be able to that will be just like ha 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 ha. I laugh in the face of that. Of course, I will be one of the most influential because we're going to teach you how. But let's have a look at me. So, in the world of internet marketing, I am um, you know pretty well known. You know, dare I say it? In fact, if I was to apply the twenty most influential people test, every single one of those people. Uh, read my stuff. Indeed, every single one is probably doing this challenge and watching this challenge right now because everybody watches what we do in the challenge each year or they get their team members to do the challenge, which is awesome. We love that. But they see my stuff. And funnily enough, guess what? I do pretty well in the internet marketing game. You know, I make, frankly, quite a bit of money, which is awesome. Now, just before we think, oh my God, listen to this blowhard in his ego, please, you know, come on. You know, you all know. Let's look at a market where I believe in my self-inflated ego style of way of being an influencer. And that, of course, is the uh, Apple market and iPad and iPhone market. I think I'm pretty damn brilliant at usage and using the iPad. In fact, I'm going to show you a bit later in the week, which I can't wait. But if I look at the list of the top 20 most influential people in the Apple marketplace, two of them would know me and maybe read my stuff. Two. Guess what? I'm not making a lot of money in the iPad and iPhone space because I'm nowhere near influential. And that was a real eye-opener to me. Now, this is not about today. This is about teaching you something important that is going to bode you well in the future. While we're waiting for all our backlinks to bite and while we're getting this this concept and what I'm going to teach you today and over the course of this next module is going to stand you in good stead. It is indeed, as I started off this presentation, the secret weapon. When I When people ask me and they say, well, hang on, Ed, you know, I've just picked this niche. You know, before I started the challenge, I didn't even know anything about it, and I've just barely know anything about it now. Well, a, don't worry, my fellow broadcaster on internet marketing this week, our uh, podcast on all things internet marketing, Paul Colligan is going to show you exactly how to do that uh, in a couple of days' time. But if you want to practice, think about using your hobby as something you can practice these things on. It's a great way of practicing market leadership and influence without being invested in a market and you're not wasting your time and, hey, you never know what could happen. But before I go there, I want to talk to you about a very special type of market leadership, influence and online project. These projects are dear to my heart and often have the most amazing results. That's the good news. The bad news about what we've called 365 projects, or which is called 365 day projects, a year project, is that when you attempt a 365 day project, and maybe we should define exactly what that is, and the best way for me to define that is to show you some of my favorite examples. My favorite photographer, and uh, pleased to say that I had the uh, privilege uh, to meet him this year is Bill Wadman. You can follow him on Twitter at, at Bill Wadman, and he's an amazing portrait photographer in particular. And he lives in New York. Now, I came across Bill when I first saw him doing quite an amazing thing for the time. It's now very common in the photography market, but when he did it, it was very, you know, it was brilliant. His mission was to take one portrait every day for 365 days. And as I interviewed him uh, for part of um, Challenge Plus, when I interviewed uh, Bill, and as I've interviewed all, you know, literally dozens of people who have successfully completed 365 projects, it's not about doing it for the money. It's not about doing it for fame and fortune. It's about setting yourself a personal challenge. Another very famous example, and another New Yorker, is, of course, the Happiness Project. And the Happiness Project was another fabulous example of someone who basically spent 365 days attempting to be in a better mood. 
And it's a brilliant book. It's about to become a movie. And again, when it was started out, the project was all, it was, was not about writing a book. It was not about doing a movie. It wasn't about any of those things. It was just a personal project. And that to me was so powerful. And of course, there's the most famous 365 project of all, which is, of course, Julie Powell's Julie and Julia. As it says here on the book cover, 365 days, 524 recipes, one tiny apartment kitchen. You know, Julie uh, Powell was an insurance insurance assessor. Um, again, working in New York. What is it about New York? All three of these are New York examples. Trust me, there are 365-day projects all over the world, not just in New York. But the what uh, Julie Powell was working as an insurance assessor and she decided that she was going to cook every single one of Julie, Julia Childs, the very famous uh, cook, um, every one of her recipes from her f- huge volume of French cooking. So 524 recipes. And the movie is fabulous. And by the way, if you want a little homework project, if you want to see a movie about a 365 project, then go and hire Julie and Julia. It is the most magnificent marketing movie of all time. And here's a tip, lads, just between you and me. This qualifies as a chick flick, so you get bonus points there. Ryan, you with me? And it's actually secretly a marketing film. Awesome. So you get both. Now, back to regular programming. A 365-day project. There are a lot of you who are listening to this um, challenge and following along that have a passion, have something that they absolutely want to do. They don't care about the market research. They don't care that the market research sucks. It is something that they are driven to do. If that's you, I really would encourage you to look at the following week because we're going to teach you the practicalities. But I'd really suggest you have a look at these 365-day projects and ask yourself if you could set yourself a 365-day project because I tell you they will change your life. I don't know how they're going to change your life, but every single person I've interviewed that has done a 365-day project that's completed it and has stuck to it through thick and thin, through sickness and health, it has absolutely changed their lives. It is a thankless task. It's not something I could teach you as a money-making concept because it's not, although it has for people you know, bought them film deals and books and and in Bill Wadman's case, you know, be able to become a photographer, a portrait photographer in New York, which is a field where it is just insanely competitive for some of the best magazines around because of his work on the 365 project. So to me, if if that if I'm talking to you, if I'm talking to you as somebody who is just, you know, you are psychopathically passionate about X, underwater kickboxing, contact macrame, whatever it is, think about doing a 365 project for it using the techniques you're going to learn this week. Now, the key formula, how does all this stuff work? Because for the longest time, People thought there was some magic to market leadership. You have to be anointed. You had to have charisma. You had to be somebody that was connected. You had to have. You had to live in New York, apparently. Um, no, not true. Not true at all. And this, and I was scared at first to say that because who am I, the little Ed Dale in Mooney Ponds? Who am I to think that I've actually cracked any formula for anything? But I did, and it works. It absolutely works. We've got three years of data now, that it absolutely works. And the key to market leadership is, drum roll please, ML equals C times CN. I'll just let you digest that for a minute. Some of you may have had to take a seat. Some of you may have, you know, had, you know, a loss of breath, at the, you know, a bit stunned at this revelation. That's all right, I'll, I'll wait. No, in all ki- kidding, what's this mean? ML equals, funnily enough, market leadership. So market leadership equals C, which is content, times 
consistency. Market leadership equals content times consistency. So content could be anything, could be writing, could be blog posts, could be pictures, could be video, could be podcasting, could be drawings, could be um, sand castles, could be water sculptures, could be ice sculptures, anything, content, right? Content that matters in your particular market, your niche. Times, and this is the crucial part, consistency. Whatever you choose, whatever media you choose to create your content in, you have to be consistent. And that's the power of the 365 project. That's why it's so powerful because it's hard to do something every day for 365 days. It is really, really hard. For every successful 365 project I've followed, I've seen a bunch which have died a early death. It's hard to be that consistent. Fortunately for you, with if in your marketplace, you know you don't have to publish every day. But whatever you choose it to be, you have to be consistent, because as Hugh McLeod in the fabulous book uh, Evil Plans suggests, which I've already mentioned once here, when it comes to content, you never know which bit of your content will spread, which will give you backlinks, more backlinks than you could possibly ever do manually, that will give you more likes, more pluses. You never know which piece of content will be that piece of content that gets hugely spread. It's a bit like a snowball when you're rolling a snowball down the hill. You just never know which snowball is going to take and become that massive snowball by the end. A lot of them just fall apart. But here's the thing, before you actually launch the snowball, you have no idea which ones it's going to be. Same with your content, which is why you've got to be consistent because some of it will die on the vine, won't spread at all. Some of it will spread immensely. In fact, you may have wondered why I had this uh, picture of a bobblehead (laughs) because I'm ashamed to say that my most spread piece of content that I produced this year on Facebook, and for goodness sake, people, I deliver gold on my Facebook page. Please go there and like it if you haven't. But gold, I spread all sorts of amazing, amazing stuff. Yet I put a photo of this bobblehead up on my um, Facebook page, which uh, my friend and colleague Andy Jenkins um, had created for me. And this became the most spread, most liked piece of content I've done on Facebook all year. Thanks. Thanks a lot. Like I said, snowballs. You never know which one. But hey... I got more likes, more links, more than anything than a week's worth of manual backlinking, thanks to a photo of a bobblehead. Now, you can see the title of this slide here is Fears, and this is the last thing I want to talk to you about today. It's totally crucial that I speak to you about this, because I know, because you know, when I've, I've talked to people at conferences about this concept of market leadership, And it has terrified them because they have this, whenever I use the word influence, it has a negative connotation. When I use the word leader, becoming a leader, it has a negative connotation because people are shy or they've had a bad experience or they just don't want to be in the public eye and they're hoping that they can do an online business where they can be anonymous. Well, guess what? Good news is that you can um, definitely start a business and have it be relatively private. But if you want to take it to that next level, then you have to practice market leadership and you have to practice market influence. But here's the thing. If you think about the greatest leaders in history, the greatest leaders in history of all time, I'm thinking Gandhi, I'm thinking Mother Teresa, have been the greatest servants. Leaders are basically people who help others achieve their goals. And sometimes they're by direction, by pointing them in the right way, or by help. That's leadership. It's outlining a direction for others to follow. Or, honestly, outlining a direction that you believe in and you don't give a fig whether people follow you or not. So that's problem one. People have this connotation of an influence can be deemed, you know, oh, that's, you know, influence, oh, that's scary, You're using some sort of hypnotic technique on me to trick people out of their money. That's the connotation there. So that there's problems. We've got problems there. Then we've got problems based on shyness, you know, because a lot of people would not 
stick their head in front of a camera. They'd be terrified for whatever reason, for whatever baggage. And by the way, all that baggage is totally stupid, I might add. Um, but, you know, you may not think, you know, you have this perception of how you should look if you're going to be on camera or you have a perception of how you should sound if you're doing a podcast. Let me tell you right now that if you're talking passionately about a topic that you love, it doesn't matter a whit what you look like. Looks last about four seconds, right? It's what you say is far more important to your marketplace and to the people that you potentially are going to be people that you have a relationship with and people that you ultimately become your customers and clients. You know, they couldn't give a wit. But it's a big deal for people. And also then pile, you know, injury onto agony, um, people are often terrified of content creation, of media. I can't write. I've never done that. I hated that. Or, oh, video. I can't do video. I can't do podcasting. I can't do this. I can't do that. Well, again, here's the good news. One is, is it's totally easy and we're going to show you how to do it this week. <laughs> right? That's part one. Part two, influence can be very uh, private and backroom type influence, or it can be very public and leading from the front. Both are equally as effective. Um, some of my, some of the people who are absolutely key influencers in uh, various markets that I follow are some of the most shy and introverted people you'll ever meet. And it stun sometimes stuns me. You know, I get the chance to, you know, meet people online who seem to be the most witty, clever people. And they are witty and clever. They are witty and clever. But you say, oh, g'day, so-and-so, you know, and, and they are the most shy, introverted. They can barely put two words together in public. That's cool. That's okay. That's most people because if, if you've gotten good at writing, you probably haven't talked as much because you've been practicing writing and vice versa. I am terrified of writing, terrified. I failed English and that's why I enjoy doing what I'm doing now, talking to you. But think about this. Now, this is a... A keynote presentation, which I'm recording, and I'm using ScreenFlow. This is a piece of content. You don't have to see my face, which is a good thing because I'm not shaved. I'm wearing a T-shirt. I'm wearing underpants. What else? I'll leave up to your imagination. But you get my drift, right? You don't have to, you know, you can pick what suits you. It might be audio. It might be Skype. Can you talk on the phone? Do you enjoy talking to friends? Then, you know, pick up Skype and create a podcast. There's something for you. Trust me on this. There is something for you. And here's the thing. Any of these practices are things that you learn. You are not gifted to be a brilliant writer. You become a brilliant writer by writing 10,000 pieces. You know, you become a great video person by shooting 10,000 videos. You become a great photographer by shooting 10,000 photos. Everybody's first photo was crap. Everybody's first article was rubbish. The other thing, of course, is we compare our unedited work with the edited final work of professionals. And we think, oh, I just can't write a wit. But if you saw the first draft of what most people write, it's horrible. You know, the great Gary Halbert would go through 15 or 16 direct, you know, edits of his sales letters before he would release them to the public. And the first one was atrocious. It was just, as he would say, vomit to get the ideas down. And we've already talked to you in this course about doing that with um, creating articles for your backlinking purposes. So these are things that you can get over. If you stick with me this week, we are going to show you such cool ways for you to dip your toe in the water of doing market leadership that is so painless and so easy that you are going to wonder what you are ever worried about. I promise you that. This week is going to be awesome. It's my favorite module because I think it has the most long-term impactful implications for you. So you don't have to do anything now except get excited about day two. And I will speak to you towards the end of the week. I'm going to leave you in the capable hands of Sam Vitaveen, Paul Colligan, and Michelle McPherson as they take you through the rest of this module. And I'll see you back on day six. 
Have fun. It's going to be great. Trust me on this. Trust me. <laughs> All right, we'll speak soon.